Well, as the intro says, welcome back to the rest of the story. I'm out here at my brother's place. I had to get a little creative. I'm putting bales out by myself. And if anybody isn't aware, Holsteins are probably some of the most curious cattle you can come across. And what I'm actually doing here is I'm going in to pull some hay bales out from the shed here so I can feed the rest of the cows in the other lots. And the reason I gotta get creative here is because I'm trying to get in and out without having to get out of the skids here too many times. Otherwise I'd be pulling through, getting out, shutting a gate, opening a gate. Um, you run a skid steer long enough, you get pretty handy at being able to open gates like this and not destroying them. You can see I'm just sliding it across the ground. I'm not damaging it or anything. It takes a little bit of experience, but you get pretty good at it. And what I said about calves being, or Holsteins being curious, this is what they're going to start doing. See this little black one that's starting to walk up to the gate? He's going to start to get a little curious, and I notice it when I spin around. He's starting to decide if he wants to make a break for the gate or not, or for the opening. Yeah. And, see, and the problem is they don't get scared that easy, so they don't know enough to get back out of the way. And you do actually have to worry a little bit about backing into them. Older bred cows, too. I mean, like my brother's cows, they're, they're pretty mellow. They really don't get all that scared. So we do have a whole bunch of ice on a lot of our bales that are sitting outside yet. The weather has not broken. We got another, I think it was six to eight inches the other night. Um, I just spent this earlier morning in this before I made this video, uh, plowing snow all morning. And they're saying we're supposed to potentially possibly get up to 10 inches tomorrow. So the snow is starting to pile up in places and we're starting to run out of places to go with it. Um, gradually getting to the point where we're gonna have to probably take the skid steer out with the loader and maybe dig some of these piles that we have and try to pile them up and shove them back even farther. Uh, what I'm doing right there, um, I'm pushing the hay back up to the to the guardrail so the calves can reach it and what I do is I actually have a just a bale that isn't unwrapped and I use that to, to shove all the loose hay up so it's, it doesn't get pushed back away from the from the guardrail. Uh, the calves out here they're smaller they really aren't going through as much hay or bedding as much as the other groups that are, that are they're bigger aren't as many in there but they're bigger and they're going through more the Holsteins really aren't uh, being all that hard on the feed here this winter. So, yeah, this is when I got to get out and actually move the gates. But, see, so what I'm trying to do, we have a bunch of hay at the home farm yet. Um, but what I'm really aiming to do is I'm trying to get this pole shed cleaned out because we have to run through uh, all of our steers yet through the catching chute. We have to run them through and vaccinate them yet. Uh, last two years we've actually had it done the end of January and this year it's the weather's actually been kind of prohibitive of that. I'm um, dealing with the snow every other two or three days. Um, so the plan is um, we're trying to get the last of these bales used up and granted we actually have enough used down we could just shift them around. And the plan is to set the catching tub and the the cattle chute in the the hay section part of the shed here. It'll give us a little bit more room to work. And that way, um, where their actual bed, uh, pen pack is on the farther side of that shed, uh, we can just shove everything up in there and lock them in. We're going to have quite a few. It's probably going to be a little bit of a nightmare because we are going to be running through all of these Holsteins, all of the beef steers and heifers, and then we have a bunch of uh, Ryan's cows. I think you're going to see in the next clip. Um, all of them are going to be run through the chute. And you know, see, if you let them go too long, every single one of them would be running out on me. And I say Holsteins are just naturally overly curious, in my opinion. So when we the time comes where we are going to I'll run all these cattle through the chute, vaccinate them, uh, drench them, warm them, whatever. Um, it's probably going to be a pretty hectic day because once we get done, we have to go through and sort everything back out where it needs to go. But it happens. It's You can't get away with 
not sorting cattle back out some days. And it does give you the opportunity to shift some of the bigger cattle back and forth and try to get more even pens as far as they're all about the same size so they're not beating up on each other because you do get some like in the lower lot to the right which I don't think you really see the calves we got a lot of those that are probably getting up close to 800 pounds and there's some calves in that group yet that are kind of getting pushed back away from the bunk they're not getting as much feed so there are some smaller beef calves we may end up putting up with the Holstein calves because they are a little bit closer in size to the to the Holsteins you got to be careful doing that though because Holsteins don't aren't really all that aggressive I've seen it time and time before growing up where we've had the beef steers heifers in with like the Holstein calves from the dairy operation and sometimes it was pretty common to see the beef calves push the Holsteins out of the way um, the Holsteins just really weren't all that aggressive as far as getting to the grain. So that is just something else you got to take into consideration. And I shouldn't have had the camera pointing towards the sun here, but it's the only place I had to, had to really set it. So these guys, the first thing they got to do is go tear up the fodder bale. And I'm, you guys can't see it, but behind the camera, I'm currently sliding around on the ice trying to get the other hay bale that I had sitting out. And that brings up a good subject. I got stuck in this lot the other day. Like legitimately, I'm stuck where I could not get out. I could move back and forth and everything, but just to the left of the screen, there's a little bit of a, a downhill slope um, that had about an inch of ice on it. And it was the last day that Ryan and I fed. Uh, I legitimately could not back up out of it. I was trying to use the bucket and everything, but it was so slick that I, I literally had to go use a full bag of salt um, just to get enough traction where I could get out. So, yes, um, we don't have chains for the skid steer. Uh, definitely probably going to have to start looking for some. Uh, even when the ground isn't icy in that, when we get towards even like the mud, we'll get in late March, early April when the winter starts to switch over to spring. Um, even chains for getting around some of this mud we have around here, especially feeding out at my brother's place, uh, would probably make feeding a heck of a lot easier. And this is, um, the bale on the left is a hay bale that was stored inside. You can see I just literally walked around it and just unwrapped it naturally. The fodder bale is the other way to cut the net wrap off. Um, it had a bunch of ice on it, so I really didn't take the time to try to unwrap it I just pulled my knife out and slit all the net wrap in one go and just pull it all off in just one big chunk um, either or works better I mean if you don't have a knife wrapping it out individually just one round at a time is the about the only way you can really go and the really biggest tool that you can have in your pocket is a is a pocket knife at this time of year uh, you're, you're using it all the time for net wrap, for cutting away at ice. Um, I had a door that actually iced up on me. I was using it to cut the ice out from underneath the door. So uh, this has been probably our, probably the most snow and ice we've dealt with in the past three or four years. And he said it's still February. We got a lot of, a lot of winter to go. That's all I got for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next one. I'll talk to you later. And now you know the rest of the story.